What's up, Nail Geeks, and welcome to a brand new brand video. I'm very excited to be presenting you guys with Monarch Lacquer. Um, this is such a massive video. I have all of her launch stuff, and before we get into the swatches, before we get into nail art, before we get into all the things that I have packed into this video, it's so huge. Um, I wanted to give a quick little backstory, history, story time, if you will, on the brand itself. So once upon a time, there was Fair Maiden Polish, and it was run by two beautiful humans that are the very best of friends and they have been around in the indie scene for quite some time and they both have decided to part ways on their journey and remain the best of friends so no drama llama there but um their friendship is just so admirable uh we have uh adrian going out to make monarch lacquer and then we have sarah going out to make bow rev lacquer um i will have sarah's video posted in a few more days her launch is going to be next week and Adrian's launch is in two days from now uh, that I post this video. So um, we have so much. So Monarch Lacquer, um, I am blown away by them and uh, all of these polishes in front of me here. So uh, before we get into the swatches, I want to do a full comprehensive review of what to expect and all that good stuff. Um, so let's start off with the uh, boxing, the packaging. So um, they all come in these lovely little boxes. You can see um, there's no label up top, but what I really like and that's really cool is that there is a little peekaboo on the bottom that shows the name label. So I like that, that I don't have to scramble to find the correct box for the right polish, which is um, nice in terms of, you know, if you're gonna put it into a Helmer or some type of cabinet, but I do like that I don't have to do that. So uh, this is really nice. If I bust a box for a normal polish and like a normal collection and say I have the box for the top coat that I'm not gonna be using the box a whole lot to, for that. So the box is um, really nice and sturdy, nice feel to it. And uh, real quick, be before we get into swatches even more, um, I'm gonna have some more close-ups behind me on the screen here so you guys can see more up close and personal what the boxes look like. Um, throughout the video, also, uh, we do have uh, the uh, the brush. The brush for the polishes for Monarch are what I would consider the uh, fan type. They're more... I wouldn't say they're not flat by no means and they're not skinny brushes. They are fluffy brushes, um, but they're not so much the, the straight up paddle. To me, they have more of an angle. So um, I would say that they are this um, fluffy type of fan brush, which you'll see more and more on uh, the rest of the video when we go through the actual swatches and whatnot. But uh, the brand is going to have a base coat, which is called Color Boost. Um, this is basically a uh, white base coat. Uh, more on that at the end of the video when I do some nail art featuring it to give you an idea of what it does. It's basically a blurring base coat, but to me it behaves more like a cream. So almost like a like a very thinned out white cream. So more on that in a little bit, uh, but we also are gonna have two different top coats. So featured in this video is the uh, Quick Flutter top coat. And then there's another top coat that's gonna be offered in the shop that I didn't get sent for review. Um, that is a much thicker plumper gel-like consistency without the use of a light. So uh, the one you're gonna see in the video is a quick dry glossy top coat. And it's what I would consider on the thinner side. So again, more on that at the end of the video when I go ahead and do some uh, nail art test runs with all the goodies uh, to just kind of play around and get a consistency feel and all that good stuff, especially for the creams because we have creams that are releasing in the shop too. Um, best finish ever, fight me on that. But we're gonna start off with the Emergence Collection. This is the debut collection. This is a seven piece set that is full of special effect pigments, full of shimmers. Um, there's a little bit of reflective glitter thrown into. Uh, these are lovely. It definitely gives me this sultry sort of vibe. I'm really digging it. I think the whole vibe in general, especially when you go look at the website, um, gives off this really chic, classy. And to me, I almost feel like this I don't know. It's it's hard to say. It's almost like um, kind of like subdued Bollywood colors, if you will. So uh, definitely geeked out for that. Um, and 
We're going to talk about the Emergence Collection first. Then we're going to go over the Milk Bath Trio that um, we'll be launching alongside in the opening. And then finally, we're going to go over the Cream Collection that are going to be standard to the shop. So uh, without further ado, let's dive right into the Emergence Collection. First up is Jewel Wing. This is described as a rich plum base with super shifting shimmer from deep violet to alluring shades of blue, green, and gold. This one has a very very packed full jelly feel this is not skimping on that beautiful shimmery pigment at all now in indoor lighting you're going to see a dominant gold cast to this one at angles and more extreme angles i definitely saw that lovely green kind of glow and then at more extreme angles i saw that blue really really nice now, I do think the video is being pretty color accurate to what I'm seeing in person, at least on my monitors. This is what I would describe as a true plummy, almost grape sort of base color. For opacity, I'm going to suggest going up to three light to normal coats on it. Because it's so packed full of shimmer, it does dry down quite flat. And next up is my personal favorite out of the set. This is Papillon Pearl. This is a refined white polish adorned with a delicate yet pronounced golden shimmer. That golden shimmer is absolutely delicate, but it is quite strong. In my experience, a lot of white polishes that have shimmer in them, usually the shimmer is kind of subdued a little bit, especially when we are talking like gold shimmers, typically not as strong as this one. This is very obvious in person. This has a very rich Crelly formula to it. I think two light to normal coats is going to be perfect for most and finish with a good glossy top coat and you're good to go. This is so beautiful in person. And next up, we've got Petal Dancer. This is a soft pink with striking violet shimmer and pink to orange shifting iridescent flakes for added layers of dimension. It is stated in our PR information, this can be used as a topper, but please know if you wear it by itself, it is intended to be quite sheer. So your uh, smile line showing through is on purpose. So I choose to wear this up at three coats, and I do absolutely agree with that official description that um, I could see my visible nail line. Now, for some reason, um, I'm not sure if it's my dip powder or if it is just my uh, free edge color, but for some reason, you can kind of see it here on my third coat. My free edge took on a yellowish sort of appearance with uh, whatever is tinting this base. So if you're like me and maybe you have a yellowy sort of tint to your free edge i would definitely su suggest a uh, purple base coat to this one to prevent that from happening and next we've got fluttering butterfly this is a medium red to violet with fiery shifting shimmer finished with hollow flake so um i definitely agree with that official description it's a medium reddish violet but to my eyes and this might just be me um I'm seeing more of a mauve sort of berry, if that makes sense. Perhaps it's the uh, shimmer that's kind of warming it up overall, which I'm pretty sure that's probably what's happening here. But to me, I think it looks like a mauve and it's very flattering. It does look almost neutral against my skin tone. So if you are medium with uh, warm undertones, I think it might pull that way on you too. For opacity, I'm going to suggest going up to three coats on it and let it build up slowly. This is lovely. Lots of holographic effect happening here and a strong glowing factor from that shimmer. Once again, this also dries down quite flat. And next we've got Vintage Moth. This is a sandy neutral base with pink to green to gold shifting shimmer and gold reflective sparkle. Now this one is a surprise stunner for me. When I first saw this out of the box, I was like, okay, it's golden undertoned and it looks very warm undertoned. So I knew it was just gonna, my skin tone was just gonna eat it up and it was gonna look very uh, washed out on me. I didn't find that to be the case. I was pleasantly surprised that for being a warm golden polish, um, I thought it flattered really well. Definite shock there. So if you're medium to deep skin tone, maybe give this one a try. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised like myself that the shimmer and the beautiful sparkly goodness from that gold reflective polish kind of takes over everything else. So I would say an amped up neutral if you are on uh, my skin tone or deeper. And lastly, we've got Luna Moon Dust. This is my second favorite in the set. This is a periwinkle purple polish bursting with micro aurora shifting flake, shifting shimmer, and a reflective glitter pop. So this has tons going on with it. Um, it's very much what I would classify as really truly leaning as a blue. It's 
to my eyes, even not just on the monitor here, but looking at the bottle in front of me, I'm seeing it definitely flirting with being a blue base, maybe a medium blue. And honestly, I think it's probably the shimmer once again, that's kind of uh, affecting that base color a bit too. But for opacity, I'm going to suggest three coats on it. It does start off quite a bit on the jelly side. Allow it to build up slow and even and allow that reflective glitter texture to build upon your coats as you don't want to get any over buildup since this does have quite a bit of a strong squishy factor to it. And I would also suggest a glitter smoothing top coat with this one and then the previous vintage moth. Okay, so that was the emergence collection. Magical, shifty, pretty goodness. Now we're going to go over the milk bath trio. Uh, these are designed to be very sheer. Um, they're not designed to cover up your visible nail line. Of course, you can use the color boost um, if you so choose, but I didn't want to show off what they look like when they're super, super opaque, because that is not what Adrian intended for that set. Um, I personally love Milk Bath milky looking polishes. It's basically this creamy, almost like a milky bath, <laughs> for lack of better words, uh, look. Uh, you're going to see a touch of your smile line if you have a very prominent one like myself, and they are loaded full of shimmer. So it's really what I would consider amped up neutrals, like that is exactly what these are. So let's take a look at those. And first up, we've got Rose Petal Bath. This is a soft pink polish adorned with a delicate violet shimmer. So this one really, really pulled very neutral on me. So again, if you are warm, undertoned, and medium toned, even say maybe even deep toned, I would say that this is going to pull very neutral, very nude on you. Um, this is wonderful and perfect, and I can't just rave about this trio enough. Two coats is perfect for all three of them. And you can see just a touch of my smile line, which once again is very much intended and it, they do dry down flat. So I would suggest a good glossy top coat. And then the second one is Tranquil Mist. This one's a sophisticated tan base infused with a blue to green shifty shimmer. So this one definitely pulled quite a bit on the neutral side for me too. Um, I do agree with the uh, official description. The base is very obviously tan. It's, it's just a little bit on the beige side. It's cool toned though. So it kind of contrasts really well with the warm toned shimmer happening in it. And you can see on my full hand shot here, you're getting very much that beige appearance. So it does kind of flirt with being a nude for myself. So I think if you are medium to deep, again, this is going to pop really neutral on you. And then the final one is Luminous Blanc. This is a sheer white base with a captivating fiery shift. This one is Chef's Kiss. I mean, all three of them are Chef's Kiss, if you ask me. But this one is just stunning. It's that true white milky sort of appearance. And it's just stunning. I think this is quite a bit of versatility if you wanted to use say color boost with it to have that white backdrop to make it more opaque. But honestly, I just I don't think it needs that. Now it did have just a touch of streaking. And I think that's because my dip layer is a touch uneven uh, this time of my swatching of the month. So I would suggest this being a little softer on your brush because it does have a strong squish factor and you don't want to over build up. And finally, we have the creams. These are going to be uh, basically house polishes for the website. They're not going anywhere. They're not limited edition, um, anything like that. Um, honestly, none of these are super, super limited edition, but the creams will be sticking around in the shop. Adrian did say that she is planning on expanding on the creams as um, the shop goes on and as, as, as we get more and more collections. So I'm really excited for that. Um, the creams are intended to be worn at two coats a piece. So that's exactly what I swatched them as, except for one. But in retrospect, I honestly could have kept it at two, but more on that when we get to that specific one. Um, but yeah. these are very plumping. They self-level really well. And uh, we're going to test them for nail art at the very end of the video. So just to give you guys a better idea of more ideas of opacity and blendability, blah, 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 all that good stuff. And first up, we've got Spiced Mahogany. This is described as a deep plum purple cream. So it's interesting to me that on the first coat, we are definitely seeing a plummy sort of color. In my opinion, in indoor lights, this is gonna come off very vampy and quite a bit dark. So I would say that this is gonna lean very much as a plummy sort of brown indoor lighting. I think my full hand shot here and my swatch picture is giving you a better idea because it is quite dark and I think it flirts with being 
a uh, plummy sort of chocolate color. And next we've got Stone Slate. This is a cool taupe cream. This one is very, very neutral, especially if you have medium tones like myself. This has that same crelly sort of creamy feel to it. It doesn't behave like a jelly though. It's very much creamy, but it has that crelly feel just in the fact that I think it requires a second coat. I think all of these require two coats. Anything over two coats, I think is a bit of overkill if you paint normally. If you go in very thin, you might need a third coat, but I just don't think that's necessary to paint like that. And next up, we've got Winter Lily. This is a pure white cream. So this is straight up stark white goodness. It is uh, very plumping. This is what I would consider less of a crelly feel, but more of a true cream feel. And I think two coats is perfect. It is on the thicker side. So I would suggest going in light on your coats and just trusting that it is going to self level after you go in for that second coat. And then when you top coat, it smooths it out really well. And next up, we've got Nocturnal Noir. This is a deep black cream. So this is um, definitely a very opaque black. I know most people classify the juiciness of a black cream, whether or not it's a one coater or not. I do think this can absolutely be worn in one coat, but um, I would suggest going in for two to give you that extra plumping. Please note on the transition between the first and second coats of each of these creams, you are seeing a touch of texture. And I really want to highlight that that is my dip layer doing that and not the polishes themselves. And next up, we've got sugared lavender. This is a graceful lavender purple cream such a flattering color i think this is going to be perfect for spring i think it's perfect for summer and i think it's a beautiful transition for a fall color too it's gorgeous it's just a little bit dusky but it's also bright enough to not be this dusky super dark sort of thing it's just perfect i really appreciated this color it's very very felt flattering and when you go in with a glossy top coat it just popped so so well against me and here is wink of peri this is a periwinkle blue cream one of my favorites out of the creams this is such a flattering popping shade if you've already joined the facebook group i did drop a sneak peek of my swatch for this one because i loved it so much it's plumping it's creamy it's beautiful formula and two coats again Again, is perfection. The self-leveling to Wink of Perry is wonderful too. You can see on that second coat there a moment ago that it just plumped out beautifully. And next we've got Mint Mojito. This is a mint cream. This one's really flattering too. I definitely appreciate aqua, almost Tiffany blue sort of colors. Um, just in case this one gets skewed across screens, I do agree that this is a minty green sort of color. Not quite spearmint, but a touch more on the pastel side of that fence. Somewhat flirting with being a bit of a Tiffany blue. Not quite though. I think it's too green for that. Um, but it's just a true mint, if that makes sense. And next we've got Citrus Fizz. This is a pale yellow cream. This is what I would consider a very true custard yellow. Very similar to Wink of Perry. It's got that slightly thicker, creamier formula to it and it plumps up really well. It starts off like it's gonna be a touch on the streaky side on that first coat, but go in with a normal second coat and you're good to go. Self-leveling is very well, and this just pops so, so well. I love pastel yellow polishes. I really feel like yellow doesn't get enough attention as a nail polish color. And next we've got Sunkissed Coral. This is a coral cream. Now this is what I would consider a true peachy coral. I'm not seeing much of an orange undertone to this, so please note um, on the coral spectrum, it's more of a pink coral. I feel like coral is definitely interpreted by people very differently, so I just wanted to throw that out there. This is more true pink, tangerine, sort of pinky coral. How many times can I say coral? <laughs> but that's what it is. I did take this one up to three coats because my dip layer texture that was happening that I needed to re top coat my dip. And looking back, this is absolutely uh, plump and beautiful at two coats. And next we've got blushing veil. This is a soft pink cream. So this one is um, up there in terms of uh, this nice, soft, very subdued sort of color very much like sugared lavender this is almost white but it has it's like a 
bucket of white paint that you put a drop of pink in. It's very lovely, again, very flattering. I think this is another great color that's gonna transition into fall as well. And two coats is perfect, easy peasy formula, no issues with it either. And then next we've got Raspberry Bliss. This one is a hot pink cream. To my eyes, this one leans very much berry-like. It's what I would consider a true Barbie logo pink color. Uh, I'm talking 90s logo for Barbie. It's beautiful. It's, again, very flattering. It's got a strong, cool undertone. So if you're warm like myself, again, this is going to pop ridiculously well. I think I fell in love with Monarch's cream palette so much because most of these are cool undertone. And last but not least, we've got Ruby Rue. This is a red cream. So on my swatches, on one of my monitors, this was pulling very warm. On the other monitor, it pulled very cold toned. And then on my phone, it pulled very cool toned as well. So quite the conundrum. Red continues to be my Achilles heel for swatching. So if that's the case on your uh, screen that you're watching this, I would really like to point out that this is a cool toned red in person. This is a true straight primary red. And then starting up with the nail art for the creams, I wanted to do some nail art and then I wanted to see if they marble because Monarch is a new brand and uh, we have not seen their creams before. Of course, I wanted to pull them through a gauntlet to see how they performed in nail art, how they performed in a gradient for sponging and also how they're going to marble. So back to color boost color boost is a white base you can apply to your nails is it a white cream i do think so um, it is very thin though so i do like that it's like this just so that you don't have too much over build up say if you use a very thick plumping white cream like winter lily so it's thinner uh, definitely your preference i do like the idea of a thinner white base just to not have too many thick layers, especially when you're stamping. It can definitely add up in thickness. I'm always here for thick nails, but um, it's not cute when it's too thick. So I just, I'm just gonna speed this up real quick. You guys got an idea what I'm doing. I'm just uh, using a cut in half makeup sponge. These are cheapy somewhat speckly gradient sort of thing to focus on a pattern. I'm not even keeping the same pattern on the sponge when I'm reloading it for polish. I did this two to three times on each nail to make sure that I have nice opacity. And then I'm going in with a butterfly stamp from a CC and Sissy plate who is now discontinued. Um, but just wanted to do a little bit of a, an homage to Monarch Lacquer and uh, have some butterflies and some nice pastel -y clean sort of looks. Now I debated taking this part out of the video. Um, I was gonna freehand a butterfly wing on the middle and ring nails and then I was digging it, I was doing good and then I added the little lines <laughs> inside of it and I hated it. And I figured, you know what, why not? Um, keep it on the video so you guys can see nail fails. I'm all about being upfront and honest that you know what, sometimes things work and sometimes they don't. And when they don't, especially for nail art, you're going to redo that finger and that's okay. <laughs> So I took that off and uh, went ahead and just did another little uh, smushy stampy sort of spongy gradient that I did. And then we're doing a regular stamp. I decided to not be fancy and just keep it normal and easy and just do all matchy match for each of my fingers. Now I kept this part of the video because I'm going in with quick flutter. And I wanted to point this out because we're testing everything and all the things in this video. And Quick Flutter is thinner as a top coat and it does smear nail art. So because of that, I just wanted to highlight that. It's a wonderful thinner consistency, quick dry, glossy top coat, but it does smear nail art. So for that and being completely upfront and honest with you guys, I'm applying Seal Glaze from DRK just to uh, protect that. And that way I can use the Quick Flutter and not have any smearing. Um, I'm not speeding this part up because I wanted you guys to see the consistency to it. It is thinner. This is absolutely thinner. I want to try out the next glossy top coat that Monarch is going to be having in their shop. I'll probably purchase it and get it for my next review video, but she said it's very plumping and very glossy and very gel-like. So um, if you're looking for something thinner, this is definitely up your alley. So now we know they performed really well with a sponge. They perform excellent in nail art. And do they stamp? The answer is yes. That's the short answer. 
the long answer is that some of them look really well over black and some of them look really well over uh, white. So this should give you a good idea seeing it over black and over white. I think Ruby Rue, the red, didn't pop so well on the black, but it did pop really well over light colors. You can see here and then the two really light, the yellow and the very light pink didn't pop so well over white. So I do think that they stamp and they stamped really well. I had zero issues getting them to stamp. And um, yeah, I, I think that they performed excellent for that part of the nail art that I tested. And then finally, we're gonna see if Monarch Cream's water marble, I just picked a couple. I didn't wanna go too ham with all of the rings and just keep it simple. So I chose what I liked as a nice little, um, not so neon cream palette here. And I'm busting out my old water marble toilet because we are putting the monarchs on the royal throne, uh, if you saw my Instagram story. And uh, you're also seeing it takes me approximately 20 years to decide how I'm going to position my finger to get the opposing petal look. And it is no less than 20 years. And then I finally stick my finger in there, use my marbling tool. Uh, this one is uh, one that I got from the Fair Maiden neon creams kit from last year which is still in stock if you wanted to grab that and then i just repeated the process for the other nails and easy peasy so you can see even though my water is pretty dirty at this point uh, this is after i did my middle nail here i didn't need to clean out the water much and it still performed really well so these marble effortlessly easy peasy cleanup and that's the final product so it's a lot, right? So these are gonna drop June 8th at 10 a.m. Central Time. There is so, so much. So I'm gonna have all this broken down in the description box below, including timestamps if you need to go back for anything, all of that good stuff. Uh, the Emergence Collection is gonna go for 72 for the entire set, so that you can get them as a full bundle, or you can get them individually for 13 each. The Milk Bath Trio, is going to be 36 for the trio or 13 each uh, if you want to get those by themselves and then the creams are going to go for ten dollars each if you wanted to grab that so go to the website go check it out go check out the preview you can see additional swatches all that good stuff and sign up for the email newsletter so you can get 10 percent off on your first order and um, she's not going to spam you guys with emails or anything but that way you can stay in touch with the new releases if there's sales all that good stuff i will have all this broken down in the description box including the uh, official link for the um, facebook group that myself and my nail bestie lisa of cosmetic sanctuary are running together so you can go in there join and see all kinds of information uh, we will be keeping that up to date as well with launch information and events if you need a little bit of help and a reminder to get in there um, again none of these are limited so they're going to be around for a little bit uh, but i definitely recommend join that newsletter so you can get 10% off on that first order. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.